Welcome to another episode of Fight Night Flashbacks. I'm here with the legend, the Ecuadorian man himself, the Ecuadorian boogie man as they call him, or just I call him that. It is Cheeto Vera, and he's the number five bantamweight in the world, but number one in our hearts. It's just a matter of time before you the champ, brother. It's coming. It's, it's coming. coming. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to look at three uh, important fights, I'd say, in your career. You've had 20 of them in the UFC, so we had a bunch to pick from. So we picked some of our favorites. And uh, I don't pick them. I learn when you learn. Uh, we're kicking this off with your Sugar Sean O'Malley fight, which was uh, UFC 252. So how long, how long ago is that? Two years. Two years ago? Maybe three, yeah. And, I, you know, both of you guys have moved on from this fight. He has a huge fight coming up uh, uh, against uh, Munoz, who's a savage. You obviously fought Rob Font in the main event. You're looking for a, a, a huge fight, which I think you're going to get against uh, Jan. So you guys have, you know, you were here, and then you guys are both kind of doing your own thing. So right. I don't like to go back and rehash. I know you. I'm not interested in the rematch. I don't think he is. I don't think you are. I just feel like we both are going to keep winning, and eventually – if we, we can meet up at the top, but, you know, I'm looking after nobody. Right now, I'm looking ahead, and ahead is number one spot. So, yes, sir. You know, if that happened in the future, I'm open. Yeah, if, if, he, if he'd have to, have to beat, like, a Munoz, then give him another guy. So, let's say all goes how we think it's going to go, and you beat Jan, and then you fight the winner of TJ Algermain, you beat him, and you're the champ. You know, Sugar Sean, he could do it in a year if he flew through, you know, two or three guys. But I'd say he's two or three away from where you're at right now at number five. Yeah, I feel you there. You know, and in MMA, dude, every year it's a roller coaster. Something you happens, don't, you yeah. don't know who's, who's going to get on the top. It happens with Wahovich. Who expects he was going to be a world champion? He's a, he he become a world champion. Them Glover. Like, this fucking thing is a roller coaster. If you don't, if you, if you don't buckle up. You want to get your ass kicked, so you better be That's ready. That's what's great about the sport. So let's. Where are we taking this? The first round. So this is two years. So we're in the height of the pandemic. There's nobody really in the audience. Brittany Palm was there, so that's cool. Um, with with Sugar Sean, game plan going into this. What are you thinking? Because obviously, good movement, athletic kid. Your hair is blonde there. Yeah, I was blonde with a Viking cut right there. Oh, fantastic. For for us, this fight was just like let him throw, like. Like you know, let him come to you because he he's he's, he's a very good counter puncher. So how you counter if you don't get yeah? He's any a creative action. counter puncher. He has good movement. Uh, did the leg kick surprise you or his length? Was there anything surprising to you in this fight? I felt like we we're, we're literally almost same size in there. Like he's taller than me, yeah. but his torso is bigger than mine. So the legs are the same. The arms are literally almost the same. So it was it was kind of like it wasn't shocking for me to be in there with him in there. Like. He got his speed, but so did I. So, yeah, I, it seems to me, and I we we didn't ask Sugar on this fight. We didn't play this fight for obvious reasons. But um, it seemed like the game plan going in for him was heavy on the leg kicks. To try to maybe take away your movement because you both move a ton. Yeah, and then he kicked me too. But in there, like, see how I point? Like, I, I was talking to him, like, what's how you want to take? I was like, you talk a lot before the fight, but I'm going to talk here. And he was kind of shocked because he was like, fuck, this guy's talking to me now. What were we saying to him? I was just telling him, pick a side because he was moving side to side. Ah. So I said, like, where do you want to go? Pick a side. Yeah. And then everything he would kick, I would like blink an eye or something like that. And, you know, he, I, I believe he would focus in there. And I think, too, one of your huge advantages are you're just as good southpaw as you are traditional. So, you know, when you look at Rob Font, when you start switching, I, you know, I don't know if they're ready. I don't know if they do now. Moving forward, and Peter Jan's going to be ready for this, and TJ or Al Jermaine, is you, you can go southbound. It creates major issues for people. I, I can, I have, and most people can switch, but they don't have the same defense. Correct. For me, it's the same. Like, I'm, a, I'm, I'm both sides as confident. Then when they switch on me, I switch with them. So then whatever they have planned to do, it's fuck. Yeah, it's crazy, man. And like, yeah, I think to, like the biggest thing is when a guy switches from uh, you know orthodox to southpaw. When they go southpaw, if they're not traditional southpaws, their defense lacks. Usually their offense is good, but the defense, the movement. That's the kick that hurt him from southpaw. That southpaw kick. Yeah, see, his leg is gone there. Yes, he's not yeah. moving as much. Yeah, he's staying stationary. And that's the nerve. When that nerve goes. You're screwed. He's gone. Yeah. But it's also a nerve. Correct. It's mental. If you calm down, it goes away. Mm. It happened to everybody. I, get, I got kicked in the elbow in one fight against uh, John Lineker. My arm was dead for like 30 seconds, but I just chill. I was like, it's chill, move, wait for it to come back. You, 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 you got to relax. 
Well, you look at uh, like uh, Michael Chandler. If you saw him in, in, in Bellator, the same thing in a Mass Square Garden, dude. I'm the commentator on the fight. Man, it just shit happens. Dude. It's also a very strategic move. It's not a lucky move. Like people that go, oh, it's luck. No, no, no. You, you know how hard it is to land that fucking kick? There's no luck. It's just like landing a clean punch to the jung, getting the KO. You can get also lucky with that, right? Well, you see him there when he goes through I'm that movement. I'm fucking with him there. See yeah, how yeah. I'm walking around? Because most well, look guys, at his leg. look at his leg here. Most guy will jump him. I was like, I don't need to jump him. I can, I, oh, that's a nice side kick. I can just calculate. I got, I got all the time. I got 15 minutes to kick your ass. I don't rush him because when you rush is when you get hurt. Correct. I learned the hard way, Ben Rothfeld. But he, uh, do you, so the, you land another big leg. But look at his movement there. Because you can tell the leg is. I heard him from Salpa to Salpa. I kick his other leg. And now he's trying to throw a big hand. This too late now. Oh. <laughs> ah, look at you. You got to be the a swagger dude. in there, man. You've earned that, though. 20 fights deep. Look at these kick. That kick is not good. I guess that's why he don't take the fight. The second fight, they offered us to fight when Connor fought, uh, I believe, Cowboy in July. Uh-huh. And he went silent mode. I think now, too, you know, he moves all around a ton. So I don't know if uh, Jason Perello, the f game plan was focused on those leg kicks. But I'm sure if you guys did fight again, those off clearly leg kicks are an issue. For everybody. Yes. You, you, like, that's a problem with people. People think they only have to defend their face. Every single way that somebody hit you, that fucking thing hurts. You got no shingles. You're going full blast. So it's like... You people sometimes think they can take a couple logs. Like, no, you can, dude. It's the oh, same with your brutal. jaw. Yeah. You take a couple in your face, you're going down. He, he, he's going nuts here, and that, that's where his leg really it, it was comp compromised with that first kick they pointed out. Which he went to I, sleep in this one. Oh, really? Oh, he went out cold. He came back, you see, he went out, came back, and then I went to his corner and I told him, Go I, and fuck yeah, yourself. Yeah, man, that's the fighter in you. I, I tell you what's interesting is watching that. I, I thought. It was like back and forth, and then he hurt his leg, you know, to like stepping back. But you can, watching it now, and there's no shade on Sugar Sean, watching now it's like, oh, no, those were calculated leg kicks. It compromised his leg. His leg was screwed after those three leg kicks. You knocked them down, and then they stopped the fight. How many people will hear everything I hear in the last couple of years, like negative, and I will go crazy against it? I never even talk about this. Like for me, this guy is nothing. Like I'm not, uh, I'm not after uh, his recognition or his flashiness. I don't give two fucks. Yeah. Like in this, in the last three years, people ask me what do you think. I'm like, I don't think nothing. Like he can die tomorrow. I don't. It will, it will move my heart. Yeah, I, I gotta be honest. Watching, I wouldn't worry about it either if I was you. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I, be, I beat him. Yeah, like I, it was, it That's was, a weird it replay, was, but. it was just as clean. And then when I point, I know wh where the kick was, like. Yeah, I you called it to a T. I, I was like, right and then there. And the ground and pound, it's the, like, that's bad. And then the elbow is what really did This it. one right here. Right? Boom! Mm. He's out right there. He's definitely compromised there. But when he stopped yeah. it, see, he goes, ah, he man. arms with limb, he come back. Yeah, rewatching. I mean, that wasn't, and he's holding his knee. It wasn't, yeah, I get your Cheeto. I see, got right it. Right now, he's like, oh, yeah, see, oh, my leg. Oh, fuck. The nerves don't hurt. When that happened... When he kicked me the oh, first time. I see his ankle there. That's when he fell. And then after the fight, I heard he was saying, like, oh, my ankle things were too tight. I'm like, well. Yeah, but it all started with your leg kicks, which compromised him. Yeah. Because that left leg that he's trying to push off of is compromised. So the right one has to, you know, try to overcompensate. <laughs> he rolls his fucking ankle. But then the ground and pound, there's no excuse for the ground and pound. I mean, that was straight he, up ground he, and pound. He could close the guard. And but I, I do think Sugar Sean learned from that. We're going to find out what he learned when he fights Pedro Munoz. We'll Guarantee him. Pedro's not an easy Pedro is a great night fighter. in the office, yes. Pedro is a great fighter. Both are good fighters. Yeah, the thing, Sugar's I don't, a monster. I don't need to take away nothing from nobody. Like no, why Some would people you? feel better by talking to so I'm like, no, you're good, bro. Relax. Yeah. You don't need to prove a point. Yep. Calm down. You're good. Yeah, you let your fighting do it. Dude, I like the, the cornrows here. I love him, dude. I miss him. You miss your long hair? Yeah, a little bit. Really? I bring it back. Who maybe. did the cornrows? Your wife or you went to No, the, there's to the a South Central there's or? a lady <laughs> that works for the UFC. She does to Oh, really? To the whole car. Oh, I didn't know that. So she came to my room on, on the day of the fight and killed it like in 30 40 That's 30, freaking 40. dope, man. I love it, dude. When I see pictures of like, there, dude. Fuck. You're jacked there. Fucking how work.
<laughs> Hard work. Dude, this is uh, UFC 268 against Frankie Edgar, the legend. Everyone's favorite fighter. I had so much fucking pressure in this fight. You felt a lot of pressure? Because my coach with BJ Penn, they lose three fights against fucking Edgar. Oh, that's so right. So everybody wanted me to kill Edgar. And I was yeah. like, guys, the, and Perillo, he don't put pressure on you, but I can feel, you feel like, it. I can feel he lost three times. I was like, coach, we get in this motherfucker. Don't you worry coach, about chill, it. chill. I got this, man. So going to this fight, especially, you know, big UFC pay-per-view, Frankie Edgar, you know, a lot, lot of pressure. Dude, I was a, I was a fight you before Rose. Oh, wow. I, I didn't feel the pressure in a way like against me. Dude, being in New York that week, I don't. I felt high every day. I was fucking living. I was on a You're vacation. Ready to go. I was so calm. We were walking down the streets. I was popping some mushrooms. I was like feeling fucking great. I was like, really? "Fuck, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it big." I didn't. I'm not mystic, Mac. I didn't call the run or the kick, but I was like, "This is gonna be fucking wild." You felt good. You knew going into it, you felt good. I, and you looked good. It just, I just, everything, the aura, the, I, I can feel the fucking energy. I was like, okay, yeah. you're going to be a good fucking And we're picking, this, we're picking this up in what round, Mike? The third round. Yeah, man, it, it, this had to kind of give you validation that you're on the right path, right? When you beat a guy like Frankie Edgar, a legend, man. Oh, I yeah. love Frankie. And He's the first guest ever on Food Truck. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. He's a, that's in New Jersey. Ever. That's the only guy that I fought in my 20 fights that when I was a kid, I root for him so hard. Yeah. But he was a fucking 55er. Aldo was a 45er. 45ers and 35ers, I'm not friends with them. I'm like, fuck you. Maybe we cross paths. Yeah. But Edgar was a 55er when yeah, I was a kid. Man. So I was like, I used to fucking root for him like a motherfucker. His I never said it until now. Yeah, until now. Yeah. <laughs> he did his footwork and then his uh, head coach, Mark Henry. That's his secret weapon. And I, I worked with Mark Henry. Dude, he is really Marlon good at striking. You know, Frankie Edgar. Uh, you know, just monsters. Barboza, like he works with all those savages. He had a man. good team on, at one point on, on life. Like he have like all those good, and they all kind of strike yes. very well. Yep. So this is the third round. You're doing work here. What's up, guys? Let's take a little break from chatting with my boy Cheetah Vera on some of his amazing fights. Twenty fights in the UFC. It's important that he keeps winning, but you know what's even more important? Talking about grooming, man. You got them bushes down there. And listen, all men strive for gold, like my boy Cheeto. Gold medals, gold watches, gold belts, gold everything. However, there's a certain type of bro who goes the extra mile. He walks with confidence of an eagle and giggles in the face of danger. He's a big, hairless, winning machine. And when he unzips his pants, he sees platinum. That's right, kids, platinum. That's right. Manscaped would like to introduce you to their best Biggest ultimate hygiene bundle yet, the Platinum Package 4.0. Manscaped is the leader in below-the-waist grooming. Now trust them with the whole shebang. Join the 4 million bros worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping with the code SHOB20. With SHOB20, what do you get? Well, Manscaped's brand-new Platinum Package 4.0. Like I said, their biggest bundle ever, and they're giving you a huge manly discount the manscape platinum package 4.0 is the one-stop shop for the man who deserves it all they designed this package to allow you to fully align your entire hygiene routine with elite products we're talking about the best of the best only in the platinum package what will you find i'm glad you asked the lawnmower 4.0 trimmer the weed whacker ear and nose trimmer you get the Ultra Premium Body Wash, Ultra Premium 2-in-1 Shampoo, Conditioner, Ultra Premium Deodorant, the Crop Preserver Anti-Shafing Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Ball Spray Toner, the Anti-Shafing Boxers, some of my faves, the Shed Travel Bag to hold all your goodies while you're traveling, all right? Again, the Lawnmower 4.0, the Body Trimmer, the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer, it's fantastic. They're both waterproof, so you can shave with less mess. You're just doing your shower, man. Super easy. Comes with a little light on it, so if you're doing the dark, if you're a weirdo, doing the dark, all right? Uh, Manscaped got you covered, man. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code SHOB20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off the Platinum Package with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code SHOB20. It's time you enjoyed the finer things in life. Get yourself a Platinum Package for your Platinum Package. That's manscaped.com, SHOB20. All right, 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code SHOB20, S-C-H-A-U-B-20. So you're going into the third. You give him the finger. 
the, and the ref slapped your finger. He can't do that. He can or can't? I should, I should sue the motherfucker for a hair in my head. Yeah, you could in this culture. We're in. Uh, you know what happened here? The end of the second round, you know, we were like in a hard fight. So the round stops and we both look at each other like kind of like me, me mugging us. Almost like, is it a respect thing though? Or what, what's going no, on it was, it, was, it was Boom! It was, it was kind of like a fuck you, kind of like, what's up? What's up? I'm here. Yeah, we're and both then, still here. Oh, that elbow, dude. That thing was close. <laughs> <laughs> the opera, that would take his head away, but fuck it. So when we the round was over, we kind of like bump chest like, fuck you, fuck you. And then he gave me a look. So I told, I told myself, if I walk away from that look, his dog is going to be like, oh, he's fucking. Yeah. I'm, I got him. He's a little scared. I went, fuck you. Just, just to let him know, motherfucker, and I'm the, here. And the ref didn't like that. Yeah, but I'm from New York. You know, they're probably friends. Yeah. Yeah, they a good point. Yeah, Legit and he's point. a layer out there, so. I, I, listen, I've never met anybody who doesn't like Frankie Edgar. I like never him. Never in my life. But I didn't like him. Look either. at you. <laughs> Savage. Man, ring, 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 you're ring, born ring. For this. Yeah, you're just thriving in this chaos. I do believe I was a Viking one day. Yeah, I guess. Ecuadorian Viking. Yeah, yeah maybe. I don't know. If or a pirate, I think. But um, that too. Yeah, uh, or maybe pirate. both. Maybe yeah. mom, pirate, dad, Viking. They have a kid, and now he came out. Cheeto bear. And here, here going the third same thing. Pressure. Obviously, you're hoping he slows down because I knew. Legit. I knew uh, right here, right here. I knew you don't finish him. You lose the fight. So I, I just put that pressure. A lot of people myself. have it even going into this third round. Nin you're seeing you, uh, on the screen right. now. 19, no. 19, 19, 19, 19. I Did just, you have it that way? I just. I always put myself against the wall just to get extra out of me. Meaning you, you always have in your mind that you're down two rounds. In this fight specifically, yes. it was New York. He got a couple of takedowns. I got mm. the damage, but I was like, hey, I'm losing this fight. I got to kill this motherfucker if I'm not going to win. And I also, going into this fight, I told myself, I don't beat this guy. I will never make it. Yeah, that's the thing, you know, because Frankie still, you know, has a lot of fight in him. He's a lot of dog in him. He's a legend. You lose to Frank. The, the, to me, this is the UFC going, all right, let's see what Cheeto's made of. Like, let's see if we can bank on Cheeto, you know? This is different. Look at you stop the him take out. down, son. But, like, I, t I told myself, I don't win this fight. I'm going to be a fucking regular guy. And I, I, I like putting that pressure to myself. I'm, I'm okay with that. I agree. I had a fight with Gabriel Gonzaga. I remember walking out and going, all right, if I, and it was my third fight in the UFC. I went, if I can't beat Gabriel Gonzaga, I'm going to retire. Because if I can't beat him, then I'm just a guy. I'm never going to be fighting the big fights. I'm out of here, man. It's not worth it. There's certain fights in your career where the UFC throws you and goes, all right, let's see. Let, yeah. Let's see if you can get past this Because test. the fight with Aldo was close, whatever. But I thought that fight should be a five-rounder anyway. But Agreed. this one was like, okay, this is your, 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 your second chance. You don't get this, fuck you. Agree. Yeah, if you, you lose to Aldo, you lose to Frankie, and then the UFC just, might go, right, we're Just out. keeping it real. You got to yeah. keep it real. In, in this game, you can be like, oh, yeah, I'm kind of good. No, you got to be you gotta be a dick, and you got to be a dick to yourself. Too. You got to be like, hey, you don't win this, you fucking suck dick. I was like, oh, okay, cool. I got to go win this. Yeah, and you're just applying pressure on Frank. But, again, Frankie has so much fight in him, man. His combos, and a lot of it's, it, were you feeling the body shots? Because a, you know, a lot of Mark Henry stuff is body shots. Setting I, up to the body, go to the head. I... I have a good stomach, dude. Yeah. I think the core good comes core. from running, from doing sit-ups every damn day after practice. And you're just staying in shape. Like, yes. Just the longer you are in shape, you don't... What is that, mouthpiece? Yeah. The, the old just... veteran move. <laughs> the old scallywag. That's what I went, I went fucking to the... Yeah, you looked at like, come on. But look at the pressure. Head. Dude, look at the pressure. Two minutes on the third round. Look at you go forward, man. It's such an asset for you, your cardio, man, how, how hard you work. And, and you're starting to land, too, on him. And it's like, why? Like, I always tell myself, if, if I'm Jesus not Christ. injured, why stop? Yes. Like, why, why stay home? Why been drinking all, all, like, every weekend? Why eat shit every time? Like, I just can't do it. That was a nice scramble. That was a great scramble because, again, he t if he controls you down there, you probably lose this fight, brother. Because that you know you're in New York. He's a Jersey kid. That takedown, the dominant round. You know, it's close this fight. This fight, there wasn't a way I win it by decision. Even if I Khabib him for three rounds, take him down and hold him. He's too him. famous. He's too famous. Too he's too beloved. He, it's you know it's in freaking New York, son. You know. This fight, looking my last fight, O'Malley was supposed to fight here. Oh, that's Hunter right. Hunter Campbell York. called me. 
Boom. Oh, Good my night. God, son. He's on my brain. I knew it. Hunter Campbell called me. He's like, hey, Chito, there's no fight for you right now. Dominic don't want to do it. I don't want to bring Dominic back, but this is a real talk. Dominic is not available. You will have to fight somebody out of the rankings because Frankie, we're giving it to Miley. And in honestly, you already had Aldo. Now we're giving him a chance. I'm like, hey, I like that you're talking like a man. Agreed. Honest. I'm face to no face. Bullshit. I'm cool. I'm yeah. like, oh, good man. I, I just wait. That. Yeah. I resp- that's why I like him. I'm like, I take that. It's all good. I, I will wait. Two weeks later, O'Malley go on Twitter. Oh, I don't want to fight New York. Too much tax. It's my coach. I have a grappling, a grappling tournament. I was like, this sounds very weak. That sounds like you're avoiding the fight. Yes. I call Hunter. You see that tweet? Give me that fight right now. What did he's, he say? He's yours, boy. Damn. I appreciate your business. I'm like, and I appreciate dude, your front kick to the face. Y'all must have forgot because we're all hot oh. on Chandler versus Tony Ferguson. This is nuts. This is nuts. That's nice. Garden, dude. That's off to the right. Like, you finish a guy like this, man, and Frank Yeager with a front kick like that, of course, you're, you, you know, you're going to be in those main events. You're going to be in the big fights. How happy was Jason Perello? We drink whiskey until we die that night. Love it. Dane in the back. We see that fucking. Zach Efron with the mustache. Are you? Are oh, you, Hunter, you, right there. Are, what are you talking? You talking to DC Rogan and them? I'm just telling him I'm coming. You're I'm gonna be. I told him, that's all right. I did all right. A little better than the wrestling. I was talking shit to to DC, but I was making wrestling jokes. John, what a fight! And then here, there, this is our last one. This is your most recent fight. It's Rob Font, who's number five in the world. He, and here's my issue with the rankings. So Rob Font, Font was number five. At the very minimum, I'm giving you uh, two 10-8 rounds. We could argue even more than that, but two 10-8 rounds, and he's number five. So for me, you go eight to five. If you dominate a guy like that, you're telling me you should only be five? Maybe a little more. Yeah, maybe four. Can we get four? Yeah. If you dominate number five? This wasn't even a fight, bro. He had a lot of output, but look at his face. Oh, he, dude, he was messed up. His, uh, one of his eyes was fully shut down. His... That card I gave him with that elbow, dude, it was fucking deep. Oh, that elbow was nasty. And what round is this, Mike? This is the fifth round. Now you t- and I don't, I'm sure Perello didn't say this, but I feel, look at he's such a dog, dude. He's still in there. <laughs> I just well, every time I make eye contact, I'm like, fuck you, dude. Yeah, you're not giving him an inch, dude. And then I started laughing because I was <laughs> like, you want it, you get it. Yeah, I mean, just look at his face again. He, you know, this fight is one of the, you know fights of the years for sure. We're having a conversation right there. Yeah, there's not really a mark on your face. No, he he had so much output, but not a lot of, and he has, he does have power, you he know, but pa- nothing. I feel his power came from cutting so much weight. Like he's just a bigger. Guy. He's a forty-five or fighting a thirty-five. Yeah. Like I feel, if I'm an idiot, I could go to twenty-five and have an easy road. Like just because. I weigh 153 right now. If I have something really, but I'm like, I don't need that. I'm not a weight You don't want to kill yourself. I'm not a weight cutter. Fuck that. Oh, come on. Let's do it. Look at you, dude. Come you're on. You're getting energy just from okay. dominating. Come on. Time? Yeah. It's time. Yeah. I don't get paid by saying sitting down. Come on. <laughs> yeah, poor Rob Fountain. He's too tough for his own good, man. Yeah. He's such a beast. The corner fucked up. That's a terrible. You think they should throw it down? Oh, they should throw it on the fourth. That, 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 that's not. To be cocky is just fuck. Probably would you. throw the towel for me. I'm I know that. You. Yeah, he's. I would fuck. tell my coach to throw in the towel. See, see, he's just such. A, he's too tough for his own good because he's still trying to hang in there. He have one minute on every round of good pop. After that, he was just. Well, I think a lot of that is you know you look at the jumping knee, the spinning back, like. You were hitting him with these shots, man, where it's it's <laughs> damn near impossible to fucking, you know, to bounce back from. Like, yeah. it's taking the wind out of his sails. Yeah. But, again, he's too tough for his own good. And his corner, you know, they're just letting him do his thing. Boom, boom. Uh, Your south ball here. Yeah, he really struggled when you went south ball. But just his output, dude, it's so nuts to me. But like he throw you five punches there, but no one of those Nothing even lands. touch. But, again – to the point of bad judging, if you're a judge, like, man, he's really bringing it. You're like, no, dude, none of that's landing. You can tell, like, you look at your defense, and you're landing. You're more precise. You know, he, st- he has higher output, but yours is more precise, which if I'm a judge, I'd give that more credit than anything. 
No, you're right there. Like the 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 judges today are fucking God. shit. You can put you can put like a bag of shit on the seat and we'll give a better score. Yeah. Yeah, a bag of shit would give you three ten eight. Oh yeah. You can open a little bit so you can breathe, but <laughs> Yeah, I feel I feel like you like you know, you're so up on the cards here and you know he's hurt and he's coming, but he's not landing a ton, you know? God damn. I mean you boys are throwing this is the fifth round. Look at this pace, dude. Did this give you confidence to go five rounds? Oh. I honestly like there was a point that I, I, I feel like Perillo wanted to finish and I wanted to finish too, but I was like, let's just f let's just fight, use the defense, use some tools. And now that I'm back in the gym, I'm like, okay, this worked, this wasn't good. Because like the defense was fucking amazing. And he, I don't get this overnight. This is every day on the gym. That was a good front kick. Yeah, this it is dedication. It's just work, every yeah. day. Like you've earned this. You can and after this fight, I didn't use this as like, okay, I'm cool. On Thursday I was in the gym. Really? Oh yeah. I was like, coach, what's up? Uh, yeah, your pro's pro, man. He's like, what do you want to do? I was like, fuck, you tell me what to do. I'm just a fucking, I'm a horse. You put the fucking rope and tell me where to go. And his Perillo, his Perillo said, hey, let's chill out. Let's take it a little easy. I took that week off because I got COVID. So oh, gotcha. I was forced to take the week off. I gotcha. couldn't go in and run. So on the, the Monday after the week off, I went back to the gym. And we went back to jab cross, jab cross hook. The basics. Just because you're also out, look at you putting your tongue out. You're also talking about, you know, Rob Font fancy himself a boxer. He's a damn good boxer, man. And you're sitting right in there out striking the guy. This has to give you confidence going into the Peter Yan fight. Oh. He's also pressure forward guy, heavy on the boxing, relies heavy on boxing. <laughs> I'm an asshole. Yeah. Nah, you're not an asshole. You're a showman. But, you, but yeah. here's my thing where I don't take his disrespect. You've also earned it. He's right. also higher ranked than you. you. He was also favorited going into the fight. Yeah. So for was. you going into this fight, doing what you did at this level, it's like you've earned that. You can do that. Stick your tongue out and do that shit. You know. Yeah, you're not just doing it, but you're doing the. the you've work earned that. Too. Yeah. yeah no, you're it. right. Oh, those boys were fucking shot. heavy too. What shorts are you wearing, dude? Uh, yellow shorts and inside reds. I like the colors. For Ecuador or what? Ecuador, yeah. On the, on New York, I did Italy. Because my Italian passport and there's a lot of Italians in New York. Italian passport. Oh yeah. An Italian passport. Fuck yeah. Why? Pasta. My grandma, baby. Come your, on. Your grandma's Italian. Yeah. I didn't know that. God is my uncle. Oh shit. Oh, side to side, boom boom. Salsa. <laughs> dude, my finger. I don't know how it got cut. Dude, my hand was bleeding like a motherfucker. From what? I have Just no punch? idea. I have I have a deep cut. Dude, my see my look. My hand is how my glove is shining. It's oh, all my blood. Oh yeah. I think I lose like a pound of blood from that finger. Oh. Yeah, his face, dude. It looks like a scene out of Saw 4. It's just like brutal. Man. Looks like somebody's stepping a tomato. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> oh, oh my God, that hurt him too. The, yeah, man. And you've heard him pr earlier in the fight with that. But see, you, what I love, you're still not going crazy, man. Jason Herzog's like, yeah, Rob Fine's going to have to die for me to stop this. I think they're homies. Checky, checky. No, homies not <laughs> Look at you. Showman. One. Yeah, I, poor Rob, man. I feel, I, feel, I feel Jason giving the chance of the dub because I, I heard somehow they know each other, but I'm like, fuck, that's, if, if I know you, I'm going to stop it in the fourth. Yeah, he didn't do him any favors there. And that, that's the New England cartel telling you good job, I'm sure. Yeah. And I want to say thank you for the fight. I don't have any... Problem no, he you know he doesn't talk shit. He's just a hardworking dude. Yeah, you know, meat and potatoes, blue collar, tough fucking guy, man. Both of them, him and Kate are tough. Yes, hell yeah. Look at his face, dude. Yeah, that was a tough night in the office. You just for for him, like obviously you're fine. Look at you for God's sakes. But for him, it's like, you know, there's certain fights you watch and you're like, oh, they're never gonna be the same. And I I'm not saying that's happened to Rob Font, but there are times. But this could be one of those. Could be. There's you, a chance. Like, you look at JDS Stipe, you look at, you know, Stipe, uh, Francis, you look at some of Tony Ferguson's fights, you know. Where you Gagey, see, that's a Gagey fight. Gagey fight, you look at the wars, you're like, God, this is not good, dude. Some fights, and it's not worth it. Like, Perillo stopped the fight when BJ fought the second time against USP. 
he threw it out. Bijer will fucking never give up. Bijer was no, fighting on the no, street no. when he was yeah. retired just because he loved fighting. Yeah, BJ's a monster. He just liked to fight. And, and against GSP, he was taking too much damage. Throw it out. But I, that's what he's been around. That's what I'm saying. I think Jason Perello, who doesn't get enough recognition, I think he's a coach that, uh, you know, he's one of the best in the game. And being part of the best coaches in the world, especially in the UFC, part of that, part of your responsibility is saving the fighter to live to fight another day. Not, it's not his, that's not Font's night in the office. It wasn't happening, man. No. That, it doesn't matter. It's not happening. So you guys got to throw in the towel. So his next fight, he can prepare correctly and win the fight. Now it's like fucking, you're emotional here. I am. Um, your family's in the crowd? I got my mom, my dad, all my kids, my wife. So it was like, and my first main event too. It's my first fucking main event. I had, look at that record. I came to UFC at six and one. I did my whole career in the UFC. How many people get caught after two losses? Oh, dude, that's the thing. You know, the, the classic saying goes, you don't want to gain experience in the UFC. You when don't. When you get to the UFC, you want to be I ready to go. You're, you're the only guy I know who's done it and has, has made it this far. And these, Look at you and your wife, man. Sometimes I tell people, honestly, I'm going to be fully honest. I have no fucking idea how I'm here right now. Yeah. I get it. I work hard. I got a heart. Yeah. I got balls. But... Most people that made it with a small record is no longer around. No, because it's a marathon, not a sprint. And the thing is, if you're going to the UC, the experience, it doesn't really work that way. Because the, the guys you're getting have 30 fights, 40 fights, 30 fights. They've seen everybody, man. You know, and you're, you know, you have, what did you say, six fights, seven fights? I was six and one when they made it to the UFC. Yeah, I had four fights, dude. So it's like you don't want to get to the UFC when you don't have the experience. Because like Ed Soros says, if they call any of these guys, Noguera, Anderson Silva, Machida, when they call me, we say yes to everybody. Because if you're not ready to take on all comers when you do UFC, this ain't for you. You're not yeah. ready yet. He goes, I only sign guys who can w beat anybody. From number from the champ to the 50th guy, if you can't fight them and f figure out a way to win, you shouldn't be in the UFC. It, it is true. It's crazy. Like, I, w I remember my first couple of fights, I was like, what I'm doing here? Yeah. Okay, kick as hard as you can. Okay, try to take them. But I was really just on my uh, talking to myself like, okay, um, let's do a jab cross. Let's yep. maybe see. Now I'm just, I'm doing what the skills I I I I've been getting now with a good coach and the last five years. But fuck, in 2014 I was just playing. You're fighting. just a dog. You're a dog. You know, and it's it, it's it's one of your biggest assets. When you can make that kind of mental that dog mentality, then you add experience. Then you add, you know, your technique, dude. That's where you're number five in the world, and hopefully you're a champ soon. Perillo definitely wants that pick pretty bad. Oh, look at your little girl, man. Did they, they like watching you fight, or did they yeah. get scared? Uh, my wife told me they were, they were even watching. Yeah, They okay. were, like, usually kind of, like, walking side to side. It's a lot going on. It's a kids. lot. And then there's energy. You can feel the energy in there. No, it's intense. It's not a positive the person energy. person actually going, rip his hat off. You're like, that's my dad. You know, it's a lot. It's, cr it's it is crazy. It's a fucking wild sport. That's why like you can treat this like it's okay. Fighting is not okay. Fucking if you if you're not willing to give a thousand percent every fucking day, you're in the wrong in the wrong job. Yeah, you can play basketball, you can play football, you can't play fighting. And when people say a sport, I'm like, no, no, this no, no. is a fucking different sport. Animal. Different animal. This is fucking fighting. Yes, period. Yep, Somebody's sir. gonna die. Well, you're pretty damn good at it, and thank God, Appreciate you're fighting the world. And you're soon going to be the champ, man. And we're rooting for you here. Thanks for sitting down and going over some of these fights. And we, we, you have 20 fights, dude. So it's tough to pick. Shout out to the Thick Boy staff picking them. We love you, brother. Next love time you, we man. do this, Thank I bet you. you're champ. I Fuck would bet yeah. a good amount of money you're champ next time we do this. We will. I got to be the first stop when you become champ, though. Deal? Easy. Deal. And you got to wear the Yeezys. Love you, man. I will. Cheeto Vera.